right, you guys ready to get into this? Get your clipboards out. It's important that we hear things over and over and over and over again so that they become real to us and a part of us. Who can tell me what Joshua 1 8 says? Ooh, come on. <sighs> Joshua 1 8. Who knows what it is? This is a this is a big one. You what? You go. Yeah, you got it, Sasha. If somebody has it, go ahead and turn to it. First one who has it, go ahead and come up to the stage. They'll get you a microphone. You can read it to us. Whatever translation. Okay, Tristan, come on up. Tristan. Read Joshua 1 8 for us, bud. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it all day and night. You may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make the way of your prosperous, and then you will have great success in life. Very yes. good. So when we meditate on the Word of God, we make our own way prosperous, and we have good success. They'll find a picture for you and put it on the screen of a cow's stomach. And it's really, and no, no, like a, uh, it, it won't be like an, an illustration actual, of a cow's stomach. Right. Because it just, it just shows you that cows, um, they, they, they have chew, four stomachs. Chew. And then they regurgitate it and chew it some more. Exactly. In that sense, it is, but right. as far as the illustration goes. It illustrates how we should be with the word of God, that we hear it. We think about it, we speak it, and then we hear it some more, and we think about it, and we speak it. I want to challenge you guys, even in memorizing verses, like know where they are, let them come out of your heart, right? but know what they mean, because it's not real to you unless it's like talking to you, basically. Right. So we can't answer life's problems with the word if we don't know what the word says. And sometimes I think people check out because they're like, well, I've already heard that. Well, why don't you do it then? Mm -hmm. Like if you've already heard it, if you already know it, Joshua 1, 8 is a verse that we probably use more than any and none of you knew it. And I'm not being, I'm not being ugly. I'm just saying that illustrates the whole purpose for us to go over things and over things and over right. things. Does that make sense? So let's look at this cow and um, basically... It's got multiple stomachs, and so it goes into the mouth, and then it comes. Yep, and then it comes back, and then it, and then it goes back. And that's how our. That's how we should be. That's why we spend time reading the Word every single day. The Word not only makes our way prosperous. But the word also brings healing to your yes, life. That's right. I want you to go in your Bible to Proverbs 4. And once you have it, just come onto, this, onto the stage if you would like to read it. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to look at several verses there. Okay, Naya, go ahead and come. We'll do, yeah, we won't have the same people every time. Thank you, Tristan, for being willing. Okay, Naya. Uh, which Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. Okay. Okay. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and they are health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out it bring the issues of life. That is so good. The word is, thank you, Naya. The word is life and health. You know, anytime we're even dealing with symptoms, and I want you to write this down, they'll put it on the screen. You've got symptoms in our flesh, what are we gonna do? Call in. Right. I ain't going to school. I feel I'm like out. I'm I feel like I might I'm be done. getting a headache. You know what I mean? You don't even have one yet. I might be getting I might be feeling I bad. Potentially have some symptoms. When you have a symptom, guys, let me give you two hacks mm. for applying the blood of Jesus to symptoms. Okay? You guys ready to write these down? These are your two sickness hacks. If you were in Jump Start this morning, I was like making myself laugh because I was like talking about like if moms are like, oh, I get a day off if you're sick. It's like sickness for everyone. Yeah, right. Sickness for everyone. You know, what's that? Did you I know? do that? It's like you clear your throat. Or did I just like, want to do it in my mind? You're receiving. 
Sick- yeah. Hand sickness, sickness for, for everyone. everyone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which is like, it just makes me laugh. Sickness for everyone. Okay, guys, this is your uh, sickness hack. Like, okay. No, Number mom, one. I'm fine. I was just clearing my throat. No, you need no, to stay home. No, you need to stay home. You need to stay home. <laughs> you don't want to spread that. You don't want to spread that. <laughs> I, um, I choked on an almond. No. <laughs> no There's. You didn't. Okay. Number one. <laughs> forgive. Yes. Okay. You want to check your love walk. Because if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, you've opened the door to the enemy. So that's why you check yourself and say, okay, do I have any unforgiveness? Is there anybody that I've been like holding on to that upset me, holding on to a grudge, even shame? Guys, shame is unforgiveness towards yourself. They're going to write that on the screen. Shame is unforgiveness towards yourself. You don't want to have unforgiveness towards yourself. That's shame. And it opens the door to the enemy. So the first healness or healness, that's wellness and health together. Healness. The first healness hack is wellness that you forgive. The second one is hear and speak the word immediately. You know, when we were receiving healing, we would always watch gospel bills, like all of the by his stripes, all your diseases. We have a healing CD that we would listen to. Guys, if you don't have the healing CD and you can still buy CD players, like I encourage you to get a newly diagnosed packet at the Connect Center so that you can have that and listen to the word all night long. Pastors Greg and I have it on our phones. I'll let you listen to it. Well, obviously we have the rights to it because... Pastor Greg is the one that's playing the piano on the healing CD. It's awesome. I am so glad this tape has found its way into your hands. Whether you purchased it personally or received it as a gift, I know it will change your life. With all my heart, I believe as you listen to this material, things are going to begin to change for you physically. I encourage you right now, Make a decision to set aside any preconceived ideas you may have concerning God's will for your health or healing. Many of us have been misled by people who were very sincere in their theology, but unfortunately, they were sincerely wrong. It's my goal for you to look at what God's Word says and weigh the Scriptures against one another from Old to New Testament and come up with the simple truth concerning God's will for your physical well-being. In 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul told young Timothy, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's time you looked at the subject of healing and or divine health in light of God's word and not simply the opinions of man. Of course, I have great respect for the men and women of God who have gone before us. But I refuse to have the truth of God's word obstructed by the opinion of man. You see, it's time you allow the Holy Spirit, who was sent to replace Jesus in the earth, to lead and guide us into all truth. As you hear the word of God from both the Old and New Testament, you will begin to get an entirely different perspective on healing and health than most people have been exposed to. God's word is not about denominational concepts, but rather unchanging principles. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, we read, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today. It's very relaxing, isn't it? So you could even go to sleep with that every single night, even if you don't have symptoms. Why? Because it's the Word. And we just read, Naya just read it, the Word is life and it's health and medicine to all of your flesh. And you know what? And you can write it down. They'll put it on the screen. The word is like vitamin C. Mm. You need it every day. (laughs) The word is like vitamin C. You need it every single day. Vitamin C does not store in your body. Right. You need it every single day. Now that doesn't mean that the word doesn't store because it does. We can pack our heart full of the word of God. We can store the word of God in our heart so that we don't sin against him. But the fact still remains, you still need a new supply right. every right. single day. Because, guys, every time you walk out of the door, don't you know that that takes energy? The same way it takes energy in life, it takes spiritual out of you. 
And so that's why you have to replenish. It's like every time you get in your car, you've got to fuel up. And all of that garbage about, you know, charging, you got to have fuel. Do you know what I'm saying? And the word is your fuel. And you, so you might think, well, I had a great time at church. Like, everything was fine. I didn't get in strife with anybody. Like, I didn't witness to anybody because everybody at church was already serving the Lord. And so you may think in your mind, like, that didn't take anything out of you. No, every conversation that you had, every time you prayed with somebody, every time you served. Stand up if you served today. Please stand. Wow. Wow. Trey, let's do a mic over here. A couple guys, raise your hand. Tell us the highlight of your serving today. Who would like to share their highlight of serving? Tristan, do you have a highlight? Um, how well the cafe team works together and how great um, Sonia is as a leader. That is so great. Sonia is a great leader. And Anthony is going to tell her that that was Tristan's testimony, if he remembers, because that is so awesome. Okay, so you obviously served in the cafe. Okay, well, let's go to girls. And the boys, if you think of one, we'll go back and forth. Girls, to raise your hand high if you have a testimony from serving Sasha. Watching the kids smile because of the characters. Awesome. What character were you today? I wasn't a character. I was dancing. Oh, you were dancing, but you watched them. Guys, that is such a big deal. Okay, guys. Okay, Jacob. Making the kids smile. In the costumes. Awesome. What were you? Uh, the puppy. You were? You are Presley? Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys for serving. That is such a big deal. So Jacob was Presley. Perfect. Okay. Over here, girls. You can just pick one, Kaylee. Like, because I want them to all share if they have a testimony. Uh, hearing the pre-K kids laugh and have, and have joy. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, boys, do you all have one? Any other boys' testimony? Okay. Poseidon. Seeing kids see me when I was the star. Awesome. So you were the star. Great job. Okay, any more boy testimonies? If not, you guys can go ahead and stay. You can go ahead and sit down, and we'll just do the girls. If you think of one, just raise your hand. Okay, Brenda. Watching all the little kids be so obedient towards Miss Larissa. Awesome. Pre-K. Served in pre-K. Okay. Zoe. Helping, helping get the costumes, like getting them in the costumes and then like seeing the little kids, how like they respond to the costumes, really excited. Awesome. That's so good. Okay. Anybody else have a testimony of serving today? Okay. Riley. Riley. Um, I got to see my cousin's girlfriend's little, um, little brother, like. Cousin's able... girlfriend's little brother. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, he got to like get like some snacks and stuff from the cafe and he was really happy that he got to Aww. get some candy. Awesome. You guys, it's such a big deal. Big round of applause for all of our junior bodybuilders. And if you guys didn't see it, I know many of you guys serve in first because you sit in second, but we have a brand new youth section in the sanctuary. Did anybody see it? So there's a big flag like the flags that we have in here. Um, If you're not sitting with your parents, if you're allowed to sit in the youth section, we have a section set aside just for you during first service. Again, many of you guys serve. And I want to thank you so much for serving. That's such a big deal. And God honors your obedience to his word. Right. Amen? Amen. So anyways, why did I have them stand up and talk about that? Do you guys remember? (laughs) Sierra said, serving... It takes energy. It takes energy. Everything that you guys did, that took energy out of you. Mm -hmm. Do you know that Dr. Rodney Howard Brown says that one sermon you preach is the uh, equivalent of an eight-hour workday? That's how much you're expending. So whenever I used to do like two broadcasts every morning, I was like, wow, I've already put in like a 16-hour workday and it's not even 10 You know what I'm saying? Like it takes things out of you when you serve, which is why if you don't put the word in, Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, guys, what happens with like an empty mind that's not full of the word of God? The enemy starts filling it up, right? And what, what are some of the lies? And we'll start with the girls. What are some of the lies that the enemy will try to fill your mind up with if you don't keep it full of the word of God? We'll start over here. Yeah. Jaslyn. That you need, like, a boyfriend or, like, a boy to fulfill you. Great answer. It's a great answer, Jaslyn. 
And it's not that you're not going to have crushes, and it's not that eventually you won't have the opportunity to have that. But right. if it's if it's in the wrong season, it just creates heartache. Okay. Zoe? Um, you're not worth it. Yeah, you're not worth it. Mm-hmm. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Do you need to be a people pleaser? Right. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, following the crowd. Not being a leader. You need, like, other substances, like drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stuff. To cope. Yeah. You're already in eighth grade. You need something to help you get through the day. You'll never look pretty enough. Mm-hmm. You're what? You'll never look pretty enough. Like That is such a lie from mm-hmm. the pit of hell. Amen. You don't. You don't belong. You're not. You don't matter. You're yeah. Mm-hmm. Lies, lies. 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 Okay, guys. Do y'all have any lies? Oh wait, hold on. The girls still have more lies. <laughs> girls have more lies. <laughs> that you need to be Heather. You need to be Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Heather McClanahan. Oh, yeah. Who's Heather? If you know, then you know. It's like. Oh. Okay. What it's is it? If you like know, then you know. The I get it. Listen. <laughs> That's great. I really like your um, lipstick or gloss or whatever, Jenna. It looks great. Okay, y'all get that. Listen, we don't need to be in y'all's world. We don't need to friend y'all up right now. If y'all get that, y'all get that. I don't need to get that, okay? Do like, any of the guys get that? I'm from a different era. I'm going to show you guys a video. It's not a video. It's a gift. Hold on. I don't want it if you're, you're not, not in it. it. Hey, are the girls Just done with the lies? Me. All right, what about the fellas? Which one? Anybody got time for that? <laughs> yes. Remind us at the end. We'll watch it. Nobody's got time for these lies because... Sierra's going to find a clean, edited version of that. We've got too much of the work. Yeah, it was bad. Was it bad? I didn't watch it. Okay. Jasmine, I just sent you something. Throw it on the I'm sure there's a chance. snippet of just a lady saying, I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody okay. got time for that. Tristan, lies if your mind's not full of the word of God. Um, it... Fills you up with distractions, like how America can go to socialism. They they focus on stuff that doesn't even have any importance. So confusion, as in what gender you are and like who you are, you meant to be, but you want to be something else. Yeah, so good. All right, Tristan. That's like as a whole, worldwide. Very good, Tristan. Wow, d- Great went job. deep there. Very deep. That everything's your fault. Mmm. Mmm. That's a really good one. That's a really, I mean, it's not a good lie. All lies right. are bad. Right. Great answer. Terrible lie. Yes. Straight from the pit of hell. Guys, that's why we want to fill our mind with what God's word says about us. Because the lies will come. But if your heart and your mind are full of the word of God, you'll be able to, number one, know what the lie is. And number two, cast the lie down. Okay? Write it down. Spiritually starving Christians. Spiritually starving Christians. Spiritually starving Christians don't know the truth. Or you could put it this way. They don't know it's a lie. And they don't cast it down. Mm -hmm. Spiritually starving Christians don't know it's a lie. And they don't cast it down. And so you just start living like the wrong life. Spiritually starving Christians don't know the truth, and they don't cast it down. Will you, will you change it? I, I, I said it differently the first time. Spiritually starving Christians don't know the lie, don't know it's a lie, and they don't cast it down. Spiritually starving Christians don't know it's a lie, and they don't cast it down. So that's why it's important to spend that time with God yeah. every single day. I don't miss showers, y'all. I don't miss them. Some people will be skipping them. Mm-mm. No. Oh, no. We no, don't no, skip that. No, no. But I'm not oh, going to no. do for my body what oh, I don't no. do for my insides. Right. And that's the time that you spend with God every single day because you'll start thinking weird. Mm-hmm. And then you get further and further and further away from, from like your Christian friends, from your pastors, mm-hmm. from church. You know, you start having this like attitude that's like you're there, but you're not there. Right. So important. I know you guys really, really value showering every day. Thank you for doing that. We all appreciate that, especially the people sitting right next to you. But just like Pastor Charity said, how much more important is it that we take care of ourselves spiritually? Because when you are spiritually healthy, you're going to recognize the lie. And then what does the Bible say? Cast down vain Cast imaginations. Cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty has ceased. 
Hallelujah. Okay. So you guys have y'all's little thing, Heather, whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> if you know, and then you know. I have so no idea. two people today have referenced this movie because of my shirt. So I thought I would show them this little gif, gif or meme or GIF. whatever it is. We cast out every, every stronghold, sickness, sickness and poverty. And oh, y'all don't have it. Oh, okay, the they don't have it. They don't have Carol. <laughs> Carol's Thank back. You Thank you for that. She's not stuck in okay. whatever city she went to. It's basically, can y'all get a picture of it somehow? It doesn't have to be that. Yay, thumbs up, thumbs up for everyone. Hey, convert it to a movie. Somehow. Hey, and when y'all are done with that, give, a, give us a transformation from like um, Princess Diaries. Just so we can see that. What? All the guys are like, wow. What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Because I'm so mad. You know. Because oh, wait, that's Diaries. what we're talking about today is being kings and queens. Sounds like a really girly movie. <laughs> that's probably why I know nothing about it. Because I'm so manly. Okay. Do you guys have the first one yet? Feel My those rock, rock hard muscles. All right, go to your paper. The work of the Holy Spirit starts in you and then works through you. So the Holy Spirit's primary job is to teach you who you are. And it, just like Tristan said, if you don't let him do it, who's going to tell you? And his power can't work through you if it doesn't first work in, in you. you. It's good. So we want his power to work in us so it can work through us. The most important work that the power of God does through you is reveal to you who you are. He reveals through you, or actually through your first blank. The most important work that the power of God does through, T-H-R-O-U-G-H, is reveal, R-E-V-E-A-L, to you who you are. Guys, Hallelujah. if you ever need help with your spelling, you've got a spelling bee champion right Let's over here. Let's go. Let's go, Trey. I think we should have a spelling bee at the co-op. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Karina, will you ask Miss Marla? Couch. C. Tell her I mentioned it. Oh. No pressure. Are you going to all the right. mall later? First Corinthians 4, 8 says, you are already saturated, literally jam-packed. Everyone say jam-packed. Jam-packed. To capacity, you cannot get any wealthier than what you are. You are royalty. Say, I am royalty. I am royalty. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are royalty. You are royalty. Because of what happened to you in Christ. So you are royalty. Fill it in on your, on your paper. You are royalty because of what Jesus did. That's right. You may not feel like royalty. Then you just need to renew your mind to what the word says. He made us royalty. Hallelujah. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. You got a good seat. Yeah. Because you're royalty. They have they have um, a little something ready for us to feast our eyes upon over this here. This is my outfit in Spo. As uh, if. As if. Okay, the movie's horrible. But two people told me, <laughs> hey, your outfit reminds me of Clueless. Wow. Interesting, like, all the colors that they surrounded her with to really make her stand out. She's like... Heavily backlit. I thought that was pretty hilarious. I did not think about that when I purchased this it's blouse. pretty good production. Ladies and gentlemen. But you look beautiful, I'm sure though. i you that was not on my mind. Okay, so you are royalty. Why? Because of what Jesus did. See, religion has this lie of distance. Everyone say distance. Distance. See, that's the enemy's idea. Keep your distance. Mm -hmm. Like you're saved, but you can't have heaven on earth. Life can't be that good. He wants you to feel like you're at a distance. You're at a distance with God, which then you start acting distant with your Christian friends. Right. You know, we've had teenagers over the year tell us, well, I just fit in better with my non-Christian friends. What? That's a problem. You're not acting like a Christian then. Right. I don't fit in with, like, gangsters. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want to witness to them. I love them. But, like, I don't, we don't have the same things in common. I've never been a gangster, so I don't know how to be one. They're scary. <laughs> God has not given us a spirit of fear, Amen. but power, love, and a sound mind. I am. Gangsters need Jesus, right? too. Right, so there's no distance. Say no distance. No distance. Guys, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you now. Everyone right. say now. Now. It's like, well, when I grow up, then I'm going to have an abundant life. So what's going to happen? You're going to have a horrible life now? Guys, every season should be great. 
I mean, right. middle school was definitely one of my ugliest seasons, but it was still great. It had amazing rewards, amazing fun times. We had great, like, things at church that were happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we did fun things with my family, with my little sister. Like, every season has joys. Yes. You don't want to wait until you're, like, 18 and be like, oh, no, my life finally started. What have you been doing all those other years? High school, the same thing. Like, don't think, well, when I'm older, then it's going to be. No, right now, God has an abundant life for you. Everyone say right now. Right now. Royalty, they don't live like orphans. Right? They, they, they may not take the crown immediately, but they know where they belong. And see, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to make you feel like you don't belong. You do belong. When you know you belong with him, you know where you fit everywhere else. That's right. You're not going to catch me saying everything's my fault in my family. And it's mm -mm. not. That's on faith. Mm -mm. She has problems. She has problems quick. Anybody in the family, <laughs> y'all got problems. Everyone's got, it's not my fault. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, I belong here. If none of y'all belong here, I belong here. That's right. This is my house. This is my room. I'm not leaving. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you guys got to know you belong. Exactly. Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, you were once far off. Everybody say far off. But now you have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So you're no longer an outsider. You can choose to live like an outsider. You know, sometimes people do that. They, they stand Nobody back. Nobody likes me. Uh, it's like you're uh, just awkwardly standing far away. So like no one really has had a chance to get to know you. So it's just important. Y'all, I'll tell you right now. If someone's not in the group. You go invite them in. I assume that like you got a fart or like so you got something going on. So don't try to be all emotionally manipulative. Right. No one ever came over to me. We were trying to give you your space, We thought bro. you were passing gas. If you're over there farting. you were a little bit gassy today. You've been like you, farting. Like you you're the one who ate all the chocolate the out there on the wagon. You know, people wagon. just keep you at a distance exactly. and they blame you. Right. We got a side door right there, bro. Open the door. <laughs> Fart away. <laughs> I said, you're the one that ate all the chocolate off the wagon. Now you got gas problems, I guess. <clears throat> we know where the chocolate went. <sighs> Don't be an outsider, guys. That's right. So... Christ did that for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Religion thrives, thrives on that lie. On that lie. When we all get to heaven, what a glorious day Ooh, it will be. What a I'm glorious not waiting until heaven. I'm going to have glory now. Now. Everyone say now. David said, now. I would have fainted unless I believed mm. to see the goodness of God in the land of, of the, the living. living. That's why some of y'all fainting. Mm -mm. Y'all be fainting. Y'all be tripping. Why? Because you don't really believe how good this is. Because if you knew how good this was, you would not be fainting. You would not be tripping. Right. You would be honoring God's word. You would little, be experiencing an abundant gangsters. life. Y'all, middle school's awesome. Exactly. There's no reason to have problems in middle school. Amen. Okay? You're going to get through it. You're going to make it through puberty. It's fine. Just go through it. Just keep going. We're right here with you guys. We will never leave you or forsake you. That's right. God. And then when you get to be in high school, we're going to be there. Guess what? You can't get, you get rid of us. Intern, we're still there. Boom. We're, gonna be we're there. still there. Married life, Boom. pastor, bam. College. Single Boom. life. We Single still life. show up in that. You basically cannot escape us. Guys, you're never going to be without us. We will never <laughs> leave you or forsake you. In all the seasons. I will be here for you somewhere in the night somewhere in the night god can never get any closer to mankind than what he did in reincarnation that means when jesus did everything that he did on the cross it's like i just don't feel him i just feel uh. he's right there feeling you don't need to feel him you no. need to believe him that's right and no wonder you don't feel anything. You don't, listen, y'all, when I like curled up in my quiet time this morning, like it didn't take a really long time to be so aware that he is right here with me. Wow. Right? Put on a certain song that's like, you know, I've, I've been enjoying, you know, open up the word and like he's right there. He's more real than anything else that's that so you powerful. see or feel. I thought you were going to say when I curled up in my quiet time, it didn't take very long and I was back asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody ever been there before? Right, but no, PC flipping the script. He's right there. Y'all, I sit up in a place where if I fall. But the way she I said sleep. it, like I, when I curl up in my quiet time, I was like, she's going back to sleep. <laughs> if she got that blanket anywhere near her, it's going to be like, Ooh, I'll be right back with you, Lord. <laughs> it could be like five. Give me five, Lord. <laughs> Everybody say he's near. He's near. He's as near as you want him to be. Yes. He's right there. 
But we put a demand on him. Yeah. And we're not moved by feelings. No, 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 A lot no, of times no. people, they just want to have a warm, fuzzy, or a goosebump. Feelings be it's lying. Like, feelings be lying. Okay, you don't need a goosebump. You need a scripture. Amen. And you need to put it in your heart, and you need to put it in your mind and meditate on it and think yes. about it and speak it. Hallelujah. Number two, the lie of delay, which is kind of like distance, meaning it's far in the future or it's delayed. Royals operate in their authority. They don't act insecure. Oh, that's good. We were with some people recently, and... We had to wait in line for a really long time to eat at this restaurant. And, and then they were like, you guys aren't all going to fit. And, you know, like there's a, there's and I'm a, like, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> no, there's a place where you know every single day. Can we back this up my a little bad, bit? My bad. Because I feel, oh, I feel far away from you. That's my knee. Let me just. Oh, 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 there we go. oh. Okay. There we go. Guys, you need to realize that you operate in authority. That, that, now, that doesn't mean like I remember one year, guys, we were at youth camp. And we were standing outside waiting to go into the lunchroom. And they had certain team colors that oh could go in. Gosh. So oh we're the standing there and like you're so hungry and you're hot and you want to go inside. So this was you when I was home. in seventh I mean, grade. Inside. Who was in seventh grade? Raise your hand if you're in seventh grade. Okay. So I was y'all's age. I'm seventh grade. Let's go. Okay. And I'm waiting in line at, at youth camp to go into the lunchroom. And this guy at the really far back of the line starts busting through the line and he's like the lord hath provided a friend for me at the front of the line he didn't have a friend at the front of the line but everybody parted waters is like if this guy's brave enough to be like the lord has provided a friend for me at the he literally cut in front of all of us i'm talking about a line of like a hundred people went that's all the smart. way to the that's front smart. and we're all laughing guys that's what royalty does mm -hmm. where this store's not open oh so and so just called We'll open it for them. Right. Right. And that doesn't mean that you go to Walmart after hours, bang on the door like, I'm a Christian. I'm royalty. <laughs> You're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing what Pastor Charity said. Get my name out of your mouth. I did not say that. I did not say that. But do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like, there's Listen. a, like, you dominate. You're not like, oh, my gosh, I have to feed the dog. Like, your dog, you wanted the dog, and now your chores are something you resent. Mm. Mm. Okay, you're mad that you have to clean your room. What about people who have homelessness and they don't have a room? You need to be grateful. That's right. You need to be grateful. That's right. When you go back home, they go back home homeless. <laughs> Listen, you guys, if you get arrested at Walmart, I'll come. I'll come like as they arrest you. I'll be there with you. I've, Pastor I've done Greg that before. has been with people as yeah. they got arrested at Walmart. First but, call. you. But Pastor. I don't recommend that you try that. First call my youth pastor. I got to hit him up. I need I'm help. I'm royalty. Let me in. No, right, but not guys, what God cannot say any more to the human race than what he did in That's Jesus, right. what he said in Jesus. He's already blessed you. He's already favored yep. you. I just feel it. No, you have authority. Use your authority. Mm -hmm. When Pastor Greg was little, there was a tornado coming towards his house. What did his dad get out there and do? Get back, back up. Mm -hmm. And what did the tornado do? It backed up. Mm -hmm. Literally, we have power. Amen. Just like Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and the storm, you have authority. Just like royals say, hey, we don't like that. We're not going to do that. We want to go here. We want to go there. Open up for us early. Stay open for us late. Again, you're not, you're not being prideful. You're not being rude. But guys, don't take it from the enemy. We just feel poor. You're not poor. He was made poor so that you could be rich. Take God at his word. Speak his word. Number three, the lie of mammon. Royals are true to their calling. The lie of mammon is like, well, you'll never make any money doing that. You'll never. People who say that, a lot of times people who say that don't even have money. I'm like, y'all don't have money. You're concerned about me getting a degree. You don't have a degree. We can't. We can't do that. We can't do that. The lie of mammon. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, that you can't love me and money. That's right. He could have said a lot of things, but he said, you can't love me and money, mm -hmm. which means you got to, you, you can't fall for that lie. I'm going to do what God called, told me to do. I don't care about any, like he'll take care of everything else. That's right. That's what Matthew 6, 33 says. And we use that verse a lot, but I want you guys to go to Mark 10, open up your Bible to Mark 10 and we're going to read. Verses 25 through 30. So I'm going to have um, a girl, Peyton, come up and read 25, 26, and 27. 
Yes, in your Bible. Read Mark 10, 25, 26, and 27, and then I need a guy that wants to read. Tristan's holding it down for the guys. So read, read 23 to 27. Looking at his disciples, Jesus said, do, not have, do, you, do you have any idea how difficult it is for people who have it all to enter God's kingdom? The disciples couldn't believe what they were hearing, but Jesus kept on. You can't imagine how difficult. I'd say it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich, for a rich person to get into God's kingdom. That got their attention. Then who has any chance at all, they asked. Jesus was blunt, no chance at all if you think you can pull it off by yourself. Every chance in the world if you let God do it. Okay. 28, 29, and 30. Tristan? 28, 29, and 30. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say unto you, there is no one who has left the house or brothers or sisters, father or mother or wife, or children or lands, for my sake in this time, with persecution, and in the age come eternal life. Oh, whoa, did I skip stuff? No, that's right. Oh, okay. So basically what he's saying is the disciples are like, Well, we gave up everything. Everyone say a hundredfold. And Jesus said, listen, if you give it up, I'm going to pay it back a hundred times. So this isn't like one or the other. This is a priority. It's not God or money. It's God first and then everything else. So this isn't about giving everything up and now you have a trash life. It's about your priorities. God comes first. My tithes, my offerings, and my commitment. I'm going to do what he told me to do. I don't care how much my paycheck is. I'm not going to let my life be defined by my paycheck or by my title or by my degree. I'm going to follow the plan of God. Royals are true to their calling. Your supply is in your obedience, not in your disobedience. Your supply is not in your disobedience. It's in your obedience. You know, Whitney Houston, did anybody see that movie that, that they did with her? I didn't see it. I knew how it ended. It didn't so look it's very like, edifying. It was horrible. Um, I knew how this, the story ended. Yeah, I didn't see that movie. But here's the thing. Whitney Houston started singing in... in does everyone know who Whitney Houston is? Okay, see. Just pretend like you do if you don't. None of the boys do. If I should stay, I would only get in the way, so I'll go. Okay, all this really means is, like, I, this is the thing. We need to write it down. Like, I I need to be with the interns, like, by myself with just the interns, like, I haven't been with the interns in a while. Like, I need to be with the interns. Like, that's what this, this is saying to me right now in my, in my deepest spirit. They, they get us. Sure. Uh, okay. I'm going to hit you guys up with some Whitney Houston for my man Braxton on the front row here yeah. and some other boys who have no idea who she is. <sighs> we got her. Okay. So, guys, she grew up singing in church and reflected back on the fact that that was her happiest, most fulfilled time yeah. in her life. So somebody hears her in church, an agent, whatever, picks her up, basically. I don't know the story in full detail. But her life ended in a horrible way. She OD'd. She l- literally lost everything. And maybe she would have never been as famous on this side of eternity had she stayed in the plan and the will of God. But that was not how her story should have ended. Right. And so if you get your eyes on that, you get your eyes on that, and you go after things the world way, the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow. So it's not about one or the other. It's not one or the other. Will you please understand me? It's a priority. It's not one or the other. It's a priority. 
It's a priority. Everyone say it's a priority. It's a priority. The lie of public opinion, which you guys already know that's a lie. Royals aren't moved by the opinions of others. You think Queen Elizabeth, when she was alive, was like, let's read the tabloids. What are they saying about me? <laughs> she, didn't, she doesn't care. She doesn't care. Like, I live in Buckingham Palace. Where do, where do you live? What do you have? You have nothing. Right? Now, you're not being ugly, but this is the phrase that Pastor Dean would tell me and um, Pastor Faith when we were growing up. Consider the source. Ooh. They'll put it on the screen. Consider the source. If somebody says something to me that doesn't agree with God's word, why would I take that in and give it higher authority in my life sense. than the word? It doesn't make sense to do that. That doesn't make sense. Consider yet, the source. How many people do that? Not me. Say that. Say not me. Not me. Hit your neighbor and say not me. Not me. <laughs> you got to choose. You hit me kind of hard. I apologize. <laughs> You're so powerful. Honestly, you guys, okay, who has the Kendra that you have on? Okay, does anyone else have that? Okay. Y'all, mine broke yesterday when I was putting it on, and I was, like, super upset. Like, Clasp. Yeah. Okay, well, so How now do you we replace know. it? Oh, no, no, no. I just okay. gave that to Heather. My Heather. So can you show Heather how to do that, please? I said, Heather, I'll this broke. I need this to be fixed. Because it broke bad. I'm like, this can't break. I just you got this for it, Christmas. You broke it bad. But when you're on the phone. The lie of distraction. Royals are focused. I'm so focused. Guys, when you will focus on the time that you spend with the Lord, it will focus everything else. That's right. Squirrel. Start there. Start there. Start there with your time with God. And I encourage you to start your day that way. Mm. Start your day with the word. Even if you don't do all of your reading, listen to a message, make your confessions, start your day with the word. Amen? Amen. Okay. Royals are focused. Now, let me give you a little bit, let me give you a little bit of Whitney. Okay. Mm. Mm. Mute the live stream, please. All right. Goodbye, everybody that was watching us online. Goodbye. We love we you. We'll you. see you we next time. We love you. We'll see you soon. Okay, guys.